the Levels Network. I'm Justin Hortle, joined by the Triple OG, William and Mason. OG, we can find the BSC cans in 7 Eleven. About time. <laughs> <laughs> it is about time. You're right. I need it. I, I, need, I, need, I need to see them. Yeah, we need more need cans. Compete. Just compete with everything I want to see BSC cans <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. I love that response. That is Coles. the most authentic response we've mm. ever given. Um. By the way, the Storm and uh, Penrith Panthers playing in the grand final this week, mate. It's only fitting, right? Two of the best teams. That's how the top four works out. That's how that system is now. So, like, last year, who were the two best teams? Broncos Brisbane. and Panthers. Now we get to see it. Yeah. It works out pretty good. There's been a lot of feedback, a lot of blowback. A good friend of ours, Mitch Robinson. Hey, uh, Robbo. What's happening, mate? Brisbane Lions ex-player. Um, he reposted, just reposted the the clip of you talking yeah. about the AFL grand final, the letdown. What was I his take on co- it? Yeah, he agrees with you. Yeah, he's, okay. Well, he, actually, one thing he said, he called me before uh, we had a chat and he's like, hey, I'm going to uh, post this video. We're going to use your clip. I said, yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's fine. I said, well, yeah, we don't care. Like, um, And we had a chat about it. And he goes, I agree with Mason in the sense like if you're a neutral, it would have been hard to watch. Yeah. But he goes, he's a Brisbane Lions fan. Yeah, you're loving it. So he was frothing. Of course you'd be frothing. Of course. I, I, I know that. God, yeah. that's a given, right? Mm. If you're a Brisbane Lions fan, you're loving that. Yeah. Absolutely loving it, especially after last year. They haven't won since 2003. Like it's a successful club and he's played for it, so he loves it. So you just want to see the Swans go down, so I can understand that. Yeah. I, 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 I thought that was a given. And I'm also, just thinking from a perspective of a person like me being in the crowd, and flying down, neutral, flying mm. down. You know how it's like cool to be a Sydney Swans fan. Mm. There would have been a heap of those guys on the, in the same predicament that I've been in. So you reckon just sitting there going, bandwagon Sydney Swans Big bandwagon. We've got the biggest bandwagons of all time. Oh, now we're into the bloods. Here we go. Come on, no, let's get into the bloods. They go down there, so it's cool to be a Swans fan instead of an NRL fan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like um, all these little trendsetters. A few people pointed out. You, I think you got mixed up quarter time and half time. So it was no, 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 quarter time. No, quarter I know time. Quarter was time. Close. Quarter- no, but I could see the writing on the wall, and I was with some bloody guys who know what's going on. Oh. And they go, "We're they're done." So you anticipated the yeah? Buyer. Okay, that's what they they did. No, yeah. right? Yeah, they were. He goes, correct, he goes yeah. by half time, they'll be done. So you guys because saying the, a quarter because of the running around and the like, just say the 50 50s and then competitive stuff that we Brisbane were ball. all over it. Yep, and they weren't. And they always they always say what they're not built for the S, for the MCG. Yeah, it's too okay. big. All these sort of stuff. They all these things that they were saying before the game. It looked like that. Okay, so, so obviously both um, they're not Melbourne teams. Sydney wouldn't play. They'd play because they finished the, with the minor premiership. Yeah, they like would have played times a year. They would have played their finals. Um, at Sydney, both yeah. of them, right? Yeah, they, they, totally different ground. Yeah, they got the pre. That's what we're talking about. Mm. The Sharks. Yeah, they got the yeah. prelim at Sydney. So, um, yeah, that's for sure a factor uh, for the Bloods. But also, Brizzy were up at the Gabba. They would have had to play away, I believe, for a lot of theirs. I, but I, people I, been I saying that about Brizzy Sydney. Finished. They just they're not good at the MCG. They never yeah, okay. said that about Brisbane. Never. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Brisbane were a close one last. Yeah. And that's one thing too. I forgot to mention L- last year. The grand final was fucking unreal. I watched that one. I love that. Was I want? But that's what I'm thinking. I was expecting it. You missed. I was expecting that. Yep. Didn't Um, get it. All right. Now, NRL grand final. I also anyway. I also wrote in the comments. I feel like you've now jinxed us. There's going to be a blowout either way, Penrith or Melbourne, and then all the AFL fans are going to come. You know back what I to do? Us. I just turn my I just get off Instagram like I do, and you can't get at me. Yep, I love it. I get. To, <laughs> I, go I know on. you too. You you love it, but yeah. I'm like I I did that. So I'm on Instagram. If you don't know, guys, twice a week. Yeah. Whenever we do the whenever we do collaborate collaborations oh. for levels, now get off. Yeah. So say whatever you want to say. So when you it's come not really with, affecting me when you go onto levels and you're at tr- and you're trying to hammer Willie about not knowing AFL, you, no. you're talking to me and Luke. Yeah, so <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> and every now and again, I, I never, I never respond. I, you know what, Lukey, Lukey Lukey's loves a devil. Lukey loves a levels network response from mm. himself, <laughs> but I never respond. Yeah. I, if you, I, if you I'm feel some, if you feel something that's really quick witted and yeah. straight to your yeah. heart, it's Lukey stuff. Yeah, it ain't yeah. me. Lukey's getting the shits like for no reason over something. <laughs> He'll start firing back on oh, our I behalf, love it. but it's, love not, it. it's not us. Um, let's get to our golf day, mate. So we are filming this on the Wednesday, um, but Wednesday the huge the, bro- the news is broken. And the perfect part about this golf day tomorrow is, mate, we're going to a couple of quiet days. Um, the players are about to bunk down. Perfect. All the media has been done. Um, we've got 30 past and present players. A rugby league players there um, on the day, mm-hmm. headlined by ambassadors, uh, Daily Chair Evans, great friend of mine, mm-hmm. uh, Caelan Ponga, like a little bro, <laughs> Troll Mitt, Adam Reynolds, uh, Mitchie Moses, Clint Gutherson, uh, who else are we oh, forgetting? Uh, 
There's uh, a lot. Past, past players, the great and powerful Brian Fletcher, Corey Norman, Josh Morris, Wade Graham. Um, solid crew. The crew just – the list goes on. So I just want to thank everyone already uh, today. You'll be seeing this tomorrow, but – um, there are a number of people that have helped me get to where we are on this golf day. Um, none more important than the partners at Imagine Golf. So Raj and her team, um, I did a lot of the heavy lifting early, got all the players involved, got a few sponsors involved. Since then, she has just been killing it the last three or four weeks. You've done a so, great job, mate. Um, I'll give her her the thanks inaugural- tomorrow. Levels golf day. Yep, and Channel Seven Sounds will good, be down man. there as well, and yeah, shooting Channel a little bit Seven of stuff. Be, I'll be around. Channel 7's <laughs> finest, Willie Mason, will be shooting some content down <laughs> yeah, there tomorrow. Yeah. Lukey Stowe will be with a couple of really um, up and coming, well, not even a up and coming, established content creators in the rugby league game. Good friend of ours, Timmy Costins from the Brisbane Broncos. Mm. He's done some stuff with the All Blacks. He is absolutely a whiz on the camera. And then we've also got Alfie um, Napoto. Uh, I believe it's pronounced. He does all the manly social media, so he does all. He that does a sick good job. Thing. Then he's a gun. He's a gun. So mm. Lukey's going to be controlling that with the boys. We're going to make this look sick. So uh, for everyone who is who is involved on the day, uh, also I want to let everyone know that that piece that we did, which was really cool too, by the way, mate, come up really good. Uh, me and you talking about the 04 Grand Final. Oh, okay. At Belmore, that is available via uh, audio only, so you okay. can go and grab that on Spotify and Apple, mm. and it's a yeah, shortened it's version. Show. And you can – sorry, mate. Say that again, Lukey. He's coming in. Lukey's coming in. Oh, yeah. So, Lukey oh, will be in the Isla Cup. Yep. Yeah, you whip? Cool. Yeah, yeah. You've got to get everyone going around, yeah, mate. you watch out. So – um, No, no. That's fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Uh, so, uh, there's a condensed version for the tab and then we've got the extended version for us. For us. So, um, go and have a listen to it. Some good chat. Good chat. I also found out some stuff from Mace that I didn't know, which I found really entertaining, mate. It was a good piece. And you did a, a cool little piece that's coming up with Alana as well. Yeah, that was fun. That was a little Q&A. Fuck, you made me laugh on one of them. I forgot what it was. <laughs> it was it the mass one? I, no? I'm, I, look, it's going to give away one of the questions, but I don't mind because it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Actually, no, I'll save it. I'll yeah, save right. it. Just wait till you see it because uh, I haven't got the all clear from the tab. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, all right, uh, let's get on with – this is the first one. comes from Self Discovery Sia. Um as a girl who is new to this game and still learning, can I just say how confusing the referee, <laughs> the refing inconsistencies are? Katoa's try, borderline knock, knock on, has been given a no try so many times during the regular season. Talakai's late tackle on Lai was a sin bin when Fish did the same thing to Hughes in mm. round 24, Panthers vs. Storm game. The penalty against Mitch Kenny for connecting with, with a slip in Hazleton made no sense. If you look at Kenny's line, he was aiming for the chest or lower. Maybe I don't know all the rules yet, but sometimes they lack common sense. Love the potty, listen to it religiously every week, and I have no idea what I'm going to do once this season is over. Up the Panthers for Pete Loading. <sighs> yeah, obviously a Panthers supporter, but you know your shit, right? Yeah. That was and, pretty and spot on. It was pretty balanced. There's all the different teams yeah. too. It wasn't just purely Everything. focused on Panthers. Um, Which Kenny won. Yep. I, I think I'm the only – I think Katoa was – this was a try. I'm not going to blow, blow back against that one. Yeah, in I, the corner. Like I yeah, think I don't. I could see. I could I see could, why you could yes. think that, but the other ones they lost grip of the fingers, and he didn't lose control. Actually, it's very Panthers bias. I'm just thinking about it now. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Everything is yeah. Panthers bias. But I, I was thinking Ali Katol for some no, reason. I couldn't pick Trich for the, the winger. Control. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was a try. Yeah. Nine times out of ten. Yeah, I'm giving it a try. Yeah. But I, there's I, there's a couple of uppy the uppy Coruscant one stands that's out what where throws I was a everyone try. off, and yeah. that was totally different. So she's definitely a. Yeah, Panthers for sport. Pete, everything like that. But no, she's spot on. Yeah. And the, and it's hard to interpret the, the, the changes, right? You see that what you see from round one to 27, mm. and then you get into the semifinals and you get into the origin, and it's totally different. So from a fan's perspective, you're like, why is Confusing. it two different rules? You know what I mean? Just get. I'll just take that out. Take that out of it, young lady. There's two different rules. I Pretty think, sure. I think diehards who've been like yeah. fully engaged are aware of it and also understand it. Yeah. And probably, you know what? That it is what it is. You ra- you'd rather the rules go on like that, yeah. right? And but the thing is, like with Mitch Kenny's hit and um, Talakai's hit, you know those things are Talakai's hit was pretty brutal, man. If that, gonna, bro- if that breaks his ribs and he's out for six weeks, yeah. what does that? What, what was no um, repercussions for him? That's I'll, what, I'll give Talakai a little bit of leeway because Jerome is the master at holding it, faking it. He did it. He did it twice, right? Hold yeah. it, dummied. And then he hit it on the second one. Who's to know Telekai's not thinking he's going to run it? So I'll give him a pass on that one. Yeah, I can understand why, but like if I, you're sitting as a I defender, thought penalty you know, was 100% the ball carrier was already there. It was late. 
and Talakai already committed. It was so. late. It was hidden, but it was a penalty. I get but it. I'm happy with penalty. But I'm just saying, if he breaks his ribs, what are the? There's no repercussions of that, and he's out for the whole series. If Jerome stays, that was the power that heck guy possesses. Yeah, Jerome stayed down for a little <clears> bit, <throat> but then he sort of bounced up. He yeah, was, right. was pretty good with it. So I think that you know for sure that plays a factor. Has to. They consider that, and because they'll. I'll get to that with the yeah. um, also with the now with the, the Nars. Does he yeah. if he plays the ball backwards? Does he get? I have. I have. Um, some uh, what do they call it? Is it script? What do they call it when it's um when you've actually got what was said during a trial? Um, it's not ma- it's not manuscript, is it? Yeah. Why am I having Say a fucking that. thing on it? Lukey, are you there? <laughs> what am I thinking of? Well, you weren't paying attention. Um, you know when um when you grab something from a court script. hearing and it's, it's something it's not manuscript. It's manuscript. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I do. I got a manuscript from the the hearing from the Nelson of Solomon. Yeah, it was awful. Um, and, and I'll read it out to you. Mm. Everything that I've said for probably the last eighteen months, spot on. Pretty much spot on. So um, thank you to everyone who has joined us on YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and remember to leave manuscript. Transcript. Transcript. That's it. I knew it didn't sound right. Um, subscribe <laughs> on Apple and Spotify and leave us a podcast review. <laughs> Some sort of script. We're on fire here already. I'm spitting all over you. Nah, manuscript and transcript. Um, all right, let's get to some YouTube replies from uh, some people with regards to – and this is the last little bit and we'll move on from it. This one's from Ted. Uh, Ted Z 27 they need to shorten the club season if they're going to have internationals every year otherwise the kangaroos will end up like the USA basketball team where the stars only play at the Olympics Hmm. and send a second or third string to every other international I think that's a fair shout we won't ever get to that but I I can see why it's going to diminish the the Australian jersey Hmm. a little bit Hmm. but there's always going to be the, the best players getting picked for Australia but in saying that, like USA will still put a fucking top tier team that'll be, beat most people. But you you won't have LeBron, you won't have Steph mm. Curry, you won't have KD. I think that's. Oh, no, I know. I get it. Exa- I get that's it. That's the example. Like, yeah, um, we just hope to God. It this one is that. from uh, Paul Barnes, and I've got this one wrong. But it just felt like he missed some really big kicks. So scope. Nico had the best goal kicking percentage of any of the goal kickers in the top eight. It was eighty seven point one percent goal. Shit. Oh, so going into the finals, yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to know what he kicked in the finals. Sixty. Uh, <laughs> clearly that's not the issue this year so taking that off in mind help his confidence Paul I disagree with that last little bit I think when he's missed big kicks at the end of the games or when the game's been on the line with everything that he's been dealing with I just reckon having another guy up kicking do you think the goal. that affects his performance when he misses a goal an important goal I no so a lot of the kicks have been that I've like so for, for example uh, the, at the Dolphins game he had a kick uh, at the end and didn't nail it. Was that to win it or to put in the to, extra to time? To go to or extra time. Like it was from the sideline. Yeah, no, no, I get it. It was from the sideline. Um, the Bulldogs game, he missed a couple of kicks. Yep. Matty Burton kicks a uh, two but, field yeah. goals and beats them. I think they scored more tries than mm. the Bulldogs, but he, yep. um, they kicked more goals. That's a big game. Um, and there were a couple others where I just think <clears throat> not necessarily it affects him after, but. Um, I think he goes into those kicks with a little bit of anxiety this year. It affects him a little bit, right? And he's playing with it. He takes that one moment and can't step over it and get back in the game. Yeah, because I don't know. 87%, he's a fucking good kicker. Mm. So, um, Lukey, can you have a look and see why we're doing this, please, mate? You're having a look at it. So, see what his two games were. You got the Cowboys game. Uh, Who'd they get blown out by in the first game? Storm. Mm. So, Storm, Cowboys, and then Penrith. Yep. Penrith wouldn't have mattered as much because they got blown out anyway. Um, All right, this one is from Damian Kearns. He's – this is with regards to Kevy. Uh, On the Kevy chat, he made the big dance last year, but he'd been at the club four years and his second best result was ninth. Here we go, Lukey. 100% versus the Cowboys. One from two against Storm. And Panthers, just on the weekend, two from two. He kicked the penalty goal. It's not that bad. Yeah. That's all right. I'm just – yeah, probably. Got to give him more credit then. Just felt like he missed some big kicks. No, I understand what you're saying, but Pardon? You're zero from one, but he kicked the penalty goal. That's right. Um, let's get back to Damien Kearns. On the Kevy chat, he made the big dance last year, but he'd been at the club for four years. That's a pretty good stint when you think about it. And he had and his second best result was ninth. Surely that come into play as well. Yeah. It must be hard on Billy Walters, no matter how much of a professional he is, on and off the field. Fully agree with this. And I just just as I was sympathetic with young Matt Arthur at the at the Parramatta Eels, um, I'm not too sure if if you know with what happened, um, Billy would want to move on. But I'd fully understand that too from Billy's point of view. Yeah. 
I It'd mean, be a tough one to take. Yeah, I mean, like, I understand. Like, if Brisbane are sitting down having a big review, like all the big dogs. Like, you're gonna, you're obviously putting everything into account. I reckon. I feel like Kevy's been under the pump since he got the job. I feel like someone didn't want him there from the start, mm. and it's just like he's just happened to be okay every single year. And then last year was a bee's dick off fucking winning. So he the went fourteenth, ninth, second, and then twelfth. Yeah. I think you, – but you could argue that Kevy had – we'll get to the more details, but you could argue Kevy had more support than everyone, than anyone, any coach that's been there, other than probably Wayne because of mm. all the old boy presence that he had. But like I know you, some when, when you've big, got big people there that know that you never really was – they never really wanted him as the head guy for the job. So big pow- The big powerful guys that, that matter. Okay, so when you've got – there, there would be yeah, fractions for sure, and every mm. club's got them, yeah, of course, 100%. I know. But this is probably one of the biggest clubs with some really big personalities yep. and some really uh, highly success, su- successful old boys on one yep. side as well. So um, it reminds me of Param- it, 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 there's similarities with Parramatta, what Parramatta went through post sort of, you know, the 90s into the 2000s, mm. where it felt like. The old boys just, you know, the guys that had won competitions just wanted to be ingrained in the club and were so passionate about the club yeah. that it almost was like a bit of a detriment at some point, yeah. like what, what, where what? they where it felt like, you know, guys from not within the four walls. Um, I get what commenting, you're saying. Commenting yeah, on the all on, the time, yeah. right? And it's, it'd be hard to take if you're. Yeah. So the Broncos haven't won the comp since 2006. Right, that's a, that's for the Broncos, yeah, well. and like, look at the Bulldogs. Twenty years, mm. you start hearing the noise, right? For sure. Do you know what I mean? I know for what sure. it's like. Parramatta. You, you see, Parramatta's yep. always like that. Look, can you imagine the old guys from the eighties and the nineties, all that sort of stuff, saying shit about that? Every single club has that. Mm. Every club, and that's when you need strong people in within those four walls. Yeah, that's why you need a field goal like that who can control a lot of things and let your head coach just do his job. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think anyone was protecting Kevy. But what, as, and as you can see, like the people were sort of snaking him at the uh, at the end of the day, right? Saying, so let, I, I, letting all this, I don't, letting all, I don't this, all this shit come out like this. Where this happens between those four walls, where you're supposed to trust these guys, yeah. And they're going, "Oh, the video wasn't used." Like that's your job is to cut fucking video. Like I'm sorry if it got didn't get used because Kevy might have thought that. His, like his preparation was going to be in some other way. That's very petty when it comes to that, when you hear all those little things, right? I don't think snaking is the right description for it. I think if you go through a review, though, and someone is asks you your opinion on what you yeah. believe could have been better and then you give back an example of, hey, you know, we, we were putting in X amount of hours, yeah. we're cutting up video – the way it's always going to – there's three sides to every yeah, story, right? You know, so, we, you, we, you know, when you look at it from an outsider, if you are – depending on what side you fall on, you mm. can always – you can argue like – I'm looking at that, me personally, and going, fuck, that's not good enough. You yeah. need to like if, – if people were putting an effort within the club, you're taking a different perspective. That's why I love doing the podcast yeah. with you because you're like, he shouldn't be saying that shit. Mm. That's, you know, like, you know ke- – Complain to Kevy probably, you know, yeah, that's yeah. what you'd probably suggest. 100%. Go complain to Kevy about why they haven't been using and address it with him. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, look, depending on this, is, I've got a diehard um, Broncos fan here on it as well, Mace. So we'll get through this yeah. one and then we'll get to Madge a little bit uh, eventually later on as well. This one's from Jeno. As a Broncos fan, the Kevy situation is unfortunate but necessary. He had a great year last year when even Gordy himself, as a staunch Kevy defender and mate, said that they overachieved. Uh, they had an unbelievable roster and had little to no injuries throughout the entire year and other little things such as stars not having a play origin, Ezra, Reno, Herbie, Katoni, were around regularly enough to allow them to have an adversity-free year, uh, which may have allowed any coaching deficiencies to go unnoticed. Not saying, not saying Kevy didn't do a good job, but let's all be honest, if he wasn't at the Broncos, do you think he'd be coaching another NRL, NRL side? That's a hypothetical, mm. but what's your? But I, I, I agree. I agree, right? Like um, things slide when you're winning. I said mm. it last time. But yep. they slide. But when you're not, when you're not winning at a club like that, then you become accountable, right? And yep. then you look at the record and you go, "We've got grounds to get rid of this guy." Mm. If you didn't have him last year, you got him now. That's yeah, what true. I'm saying. Where like I know there's a little bit of a f- uh, fraction up there that for sure. never there really wanted Kevy. Otherwise, he'd be there forever. Yeah. And even getting the job, you know, Wayne Bennett had to push him in there. Yeah. In saying that, like, 
if he does have deficiencies in, he clearly does. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, we're, and, not and, we're not doubting anything. And, like and Kevy's like, and and not to say this is just about Kevy. There's a reason the Bulldogs haven't won a grand final. The Broncos haven't won a grand final. The Parramatta Eels haven't won a grand final. You know why? Because the Roosters, Melbourne, and Penrith <laughs> have been winning all of them, right? So yeah. there's we've got three really good coaches that are dominating, and they're clearly um, and three are big clubs above. Great clubs. They're clearly above the rest at the moment. So um, without even sort of digging digging too hard into Kevy in, in this yeah. case, like it's been hard for a lot of teams to win comps and be successful. Hundred percent. Do you think in your heart of hearts, do you think Kevy would be a coach of anyone else other than the Broncos? No, probably not right. No, not right yeah. now. Yeah, no, there's some pretty good coaches out there. I think uh, <laughs> because that part of Kevy, which would have been super appealing to the Broncos, is because multiple premiership winner, yeah. fucking loves the club, super Stop passionate it. about it. Whereas if you look at you know some of the concerns with him, he's like not the most detailed detailed guy. Probably wasn't. Um, um, schematically up there with some of the, the better yeah. minds, but what's he going to bring? He's going to fucking tell you what it's like to wear that Broncos jer- jersey. Yeah. Similar to Tubes, right? I always compare him to Tubes. Yeah. Tubes was like that. You can't replicate a Jeff Tuvey at Manly fucking Sea Eagles as a coach because Jeff fucking bled for that, um, comp, uh, for, for that team. Mm. But I always had, and I've said this before on the podcast, there were things I was like, you know, in terms of upskilling and, and getting better as a player, yeah, I didn't feel like I grew it. At, at Manly Seagulls, and that's yeah. and that's and that's not to have have a crack at, at Jeff. It's just the different styles, and I also knew that there was pros and cons to him, and I, and I believe that's what's happening here yeah. uh, with Kevy as well. I um, think that's the perfect analogy, right? There. Yeah, you can't really overthink this whole thing. This is a this is a performance uh, business that we live in. Yeah, that we're in, and you need more wins and losses. Here's the last he's little got bit. More losses and wins. Yeah. Uh, his last Maybe little bit. Not. Unfortunately, in situ- situations like this, when he clearly doesn't have the backing of the playing group, it's better to cut off ties, allow Madge to have a full preseason, rather than try to see what can happen in 2025, only to come out the same conclusion and waste the year just like Parramatta and South did. That's what. That's you got to applaud Brisbane in. In yeah, that factor, right? Because they're taking their lead. Because they're they're copping everything, right? And they're like, is it the right decision? Blah, blah. That's why we're talking about this now. It's not that big a deal in my head. Coaches get sacked all the time. Yeah. But because it's Brisbane, because it's Kevy, it's a club legend. fucking deal, mate. It because he's a, a club deal. legend. If this was anyone else, no one cares about. Yep. People care about Kevy and he's got big support with the big guys like Gordy and Shane Webkin, all that. But understand this, they're mates. Mm. It'd be like my mate getting sacked. And you know what I mean? You think I'm not going to stand up for him? I'm fully sympathetic yeah, to yeah. Gordy. So, like, fully so I just want the fans to understand yeah, that. Yeah. You've got guys like that are ex-players. Understand this is the, the familiarity with the whole thing is that they're, they're, ba- they're mates. They play for Australia and Queensland and won comps. Sorry, mate. When, but when, you do, when, you, when you've played with someone for Australia, Queensland, you won premierships with them. Fully understand that. You are like – that's a brotherhood built. So yeah. that's where I, I understand from like all these uh, former greats. Yeah. But the, I don't think the fans do. Right? They're like, why is he standing up? for? Surely they do. Bro. I'm just giving a different perspective. Mm. I'd expect that if I was Kevy and all my mates stuck up for me, I'd expect that. So would we I. We bled together. Yep. It's a different bond. You're not just mates and you played a couple of games together. You've done a lot of things. So they just stick, they're just sticking up for Kevy, which a good mate would. I think the – Donahue, the CEO, he's taking his licks and, yeah. and, the, and the owners and the board and whoever made the decision have taken their licks on this. Um, I've had people question, like uh, ask about questioning them, what's their role in this. Um, you give – Kevy's been given four years to prove it for sure. Now this will be the acid test for them. If yeah. Madge doesn't work out, and we'll get to Madge in, in a bit because he has f- officially been mm. announced. If he doesn't work out, then I think it's fair to say if they are the same group that has been in charge of Siebes into Kevy now into Madge, then you've got to ask, start asking genuine questions up top as yep. well. I think that's fair. Um, moving on to YouTube questions. Uh, going a little bit off uh, topic here, but got, got a couple of funny ones. This one's from Uso. Unknown. Shuttles. <laughs> L1 since day one. Got a few questions for you both, Scope and High Chief Viliami. <laughs> so the last two years, our club, Burpengary Jets. Burpengary, have you heard of that before? Burpengary Jets has played semi Thide in both GFs. Recent team this year, they had it stacked. Corbin Sims, what? Josh Hoffman, the youngest Walters brother, and Jarrell Yowie was coach. <laughs> Question one, could we see Scope or Viliami coach or strap up for a season in the pub footy comps? Scope 
<laughs> scope to chase that grand final title we never got. <laughs> Maybe that's what the ex Broncos lads are trying to do. So, question one, Mace, would you uh, ever throw the boots back on? Probably not for a season, but no, probably a few like, charity games every yeah, now. Yeah, of course. And I was, I was, mm. I was all for that with um. When I just retired, right? Mm. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, Starting 42. To get a little bit harder, I'm just like, yeah, I'm done with that. Because you start thinking about the risk and reward and do I want to tear an Achilles and a calf and, you know, like you play a, little of these, a couple of these little games and like you wake up so sore. It's just like, nah. I would coach easily and just try and help. How old's Sammy? Sammy's got – got five on Sammy. I think he's like – I think 30 or maybe 40 this year, I reckon. He must be because I'm I'm 38, so yeah, he's got to be – he's, he's got, got a couple on me I think sure. I've got five. Yeah, maybe five. Yeah. yeah, something like that. When he played in the RLPA uh, nines at the start of the year, he's in such good nick, mate. Fuck, he still goes hard, man. He's, Sammy goes hard. And he wasn't sore or anything. like Because he doesn't stop. Yeah, but he's playing. He's playing. This yeah, fucking, but that's what I'm saying, yeah. but he doesn't stop training. He doesn't stop like moving like that. When you yeah. stop moving like a rugby league player and stop hitting – yeah, the, he's the OG Mudders. The, flick, died, the flick on the hand will fucking yeah. hurt you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let alone, let alone trying to hit someone like you're used to. And it's like, you, father time catches up and We've you said start this getting before. a little bit more sensible, right? Yeah. I'm like, I've seen this. Fuck it, I'm not doing that. We've said this before. I reckon he's one of the more slept on players in that Queensland dynasty. Oh, Sammy thought I was – he was yeah. the he he was was legit, eh? Legit, dude. Legit. legit. Um, is there a – and then also question two. Is there a flick of a switch before kickoff when some players just turn into psychopaths? Playing against the likes of Sammy Thayde and Corbin Sims, they are a different be- breed of beast on the field. And as soon as the game's over, they shake your hand and the most down-to-earth lads ever. Yeah. Love your work, Uzoz. That's that's exactly how it is. Mm. I think most guys, most rugby league players are pretty oh, – 99% I reckon. Yeah, everyone's pretty chilled out and everything yep. like that because you know that you're trained to go out there and do the business. You're not faking the fucking, oh, I'm really pumped up. Because you know you're about it, right? Mm-hmm. So if you are about it, I don't I don't care what you're doing before the game. Mm. Like guys like Marco Mealy and Roy and Sonny and that, I'm like, I know they're going to flick it as soon as they – because you, when you're walking out, that's a difference, right? Before before the sheds and you're in the sheds and you can look each other in the eye, blah, 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 that's fine. But it's like when you're walking in a single line and you're not really seeing anyone, that's mm. when you're, you're in your own thoughts, right? So when you go over then you're leading, leading out or whatever, that's up to you. Mm. And I know a lot of blokes really flick it and turn into another guy For like sure. that. Do you reckon uh, like as kids, like <clears throat> not kids, younger in our careers, you're like we're more haters, like we hate everyone. And once you play two or three years, you get to know people on the, off the field and you have a drink with yeah, them. Yeah, like, I, think, I mean, look what Sammy and that's done for the for his state, country and club level. Like, of course he's going to be shaking your hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he's, he was always like that, Sammy. Me and Sammy would go out for 80 minutes and then be like, What's happening? But also that's showing respect for that level of play that Sammy and Corbin are turning it on, mm. playing hard as they can, and then also, hey, boys, you know, fuck, great game because yeah, that's that's true it, respect that's for the sport, game. That's a sport, man. That's a sport. Yeah. That's a beautiful game that we play. You can go as hard as you can on the field. And then once it's once it's done, it's done. You're an idiot if you carry it further than the field. Yeah. That's, if people like that, you, no, one, no one talks to them. Yeah. Um, this one's from Daniel Key. All right, boys, big fan of yours all the way over here from Wigan. You're the best going around. Keep the good work up. Love, you know, our loved ones from uh, from over the UK. We've got, yeah. we got a huge fan base in the UK. Wigan. Question, choose your English forward pack from these two options. Mm. All right. Option one, your man Fielden, Cunningham, Morley, Peacock, Jamie Peacock, Farrell, and Skullthorpe. Option two, Sam Burgess, James Roby, James Graham, Gareth Ellis, Kevin Sinfield, and O'Loughlin, Sean O'Loughlin. Oh man, yeah. I would different breeds, eh? You got Andy, you got Farrell. You mentioned Farrell in that first one. Great it's, ball player. I feel like um, big body option one is more your um, yeah, but I don't your like, vintage. I mean, I like Sam. I like Sammy and um, and Graham. I just like Morley in that first one. No, as in you split. So like. The option one was the start of your era, mm. and then you also then flowed was, in and yeah, played yeah, against yeah. all the others. Right. I was yeah. right again. So I like played split. against most. I think I played against most of those guys. Yeah, you would have. I think, um, I think that second pack has a bit more variety in their attack, and they hit because I think Sam Burgess is is Morley two point mm-hmm. with a skill set, right? Yes, agreed. So I'm like, you can Moz. handle. You can handle. I love Moz. He's mm. one of the toughest blokes, blokes of all time. That back row has got a lot of skill, that second one. Yeah, yeah. I'll go on the second one. Yeah, I would have gone on the second one too. And I'd move Kevin Sinfield to lock as well and move on. Of course. I'd lock yeah. one on the edge. I think – I reckon you could pick – could you pick another back row apart from Sinfield? Uh, what, you, Ellis, you, yeah. you didn't like Sinfield. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't he put him silky, in that man. best. I'd uh, put him I, at lock, but I wouldn't – I thought it was – yeah, lock. But then I'd rather O'Loughlin 
Would you rather a lock, a lock on? Yeah, because okay. he's a bigger body, he's a bit more, and he's got the same skill set. I've got the back end of O'Loughlin. So who's, who's, who, who's another really good pommy right side back row? Gareth Ellis in that era, I liked him. Who are we missing? Like, would you even move like an Elliot Whitehead over here? Yeah, he's been like a war horse like for so long. Yeah. James Graham's the other prop. James Graham, Ro- uh, Roby, Roby's man. Roby's a gun. I wish Roby had come Roby to the Roby would have nailed it over yeah. here. Has he just retired? I wish Kevin Sinfield and Roby would have come over. Those those were my two. Yeah. Oh, Lachlan as well, actually. Lachlan was a beast. Yeah, I just can't have Sinfield and no Lachlan in the same pack. Yeah. Yeah, too, because they're too long. Very similar, yeah. yeah. And you gotta have a right you gotta have a back row who's gonna be hitting holes. They all want a ball play there. And Sin- I reckon O'Loughlin Sinfield even played a bit of six at times. Yeah, he's too. silky yeah. skills, right? Yeah. But when you need your lock to play like uh, Tamalolo. What was Cunningham like to play against? He was good. He was a pain in the ass. Yeah, hey? fuck He's he an was OG. strong. Yeah. I remember playing against yeah. Kieran Cunningham. Yeah. He was a yeah, he was a nugget, man. He was a cracking bloke. Yeah. Absolute legends. All those guys, all the Pommy guys, great guys. Is it Owen Farrell, right? He's the 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 redhead Young from Wigan. Farrell's still playing? A, uh, or was it Andy Farrell? Andy Farrell was Is he the talking dad. about Andy Farrell? Andy Farrell, Farrell yeah. Okay. Owen Farrell's his kid, plays for England. For, for Wigan? Yeah. The, the no. redhead? Oh yes, yeah, so I got you. No, I got yeah. you. No, who am I thinking? Different of? Farrell. Yeah, I know who you're talking there's about. The, there's the guy that's still playing. I, I actually fucking know. I got into him actually. <laughs> the redhead. <laughs> I, I I was mad disrespectful to that. Yeah. But he's a gun. He's a proper gun. I fucking feel like a Would be related to him? First team. He's the captain now. There he is. He's still going. He's a fucking animal. Liam Farrell. Liam yeah, Farrell. Liam Farrell. Um Don't think it's any relation to Andy okay, Farrell, but yeah, not Andrew. Because I know Farrell. his kid is like the ten for like for England, England. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah for a couple of years. Um, yeah, so George that second one, man, because I think the second one is like is, is j- just as good, but just with the with a higher skill set. Just like in anything, like yeah. they, they got more skillful as they progress, because right? yeah, so exactly. I feel like because that's a, a lot of those pack. guys got to play over here and to experience that. Yeah, your first cousin, your first oh, cousin is first cousin related. Oh, yeah, uh, sick. First okay. Yeah. I'm at, we're, Under we're, 2016, I was saying something like, get, get at the ginger, get at the ginger. <laughs> like, something like really like just stupid, like yeah. really mature. And he was just looking at me like- Fuck off. He's just like, you ain't it, bro. Fuck off, you Aussie twat. George, George Williams was his half as well. <laughs> Young George Williams. Oh, I love the yeah. English. Yeah. Mate, I love it. That I Wigan team, it, they had so much There's shit about them. There's some tough him. bricks, aren't Yeah, yeah it was fun. And they, and they wouldn't even know who I was too long. Who the fuck is this guy? Shut up. Who's this guy? <laughs> oh, shit. Um, all right, let's get to it. The Storm's Hail Mary right. grand final appeal fails. Um, the Storm has suffered a monumental blow with Man Mountain Nelson or Sofa Solomon to miss Sunday's grand final showdown. Uh, the guilty verdict means the, the towering prop will miss five matches. Far out. That's crazy, man. That is so it's fucking great, stupid. man. We said it before. Pardon? Can he, yeah, throw he'll, can he throw a few for the Kiwis? He will, yeah. He'll get three games for the Kiwis. He would have made the Kiwis easy. Uh, with seventh game rookie Lazarus Valepu, the man most likely, and we've got the list. He's in. So I did this on Tuesday night. He's mm. in. The NRL defense response. Transcript. Transcript, not manuscript. Transcript. NRL counsel Giles is claiming that the force produced by an outside back isn't comparable to a Sofa Solomona. Yeah, I know. I know. Let me- what? He also pointed out the fact that Holmes bounced back, so they must have had an example of Valentine Holmes, whereas Asafa Solomona remains stationary. Giles is arguing that it is proof the level of force is greater in the con tackle. I fucking hate How's this. How's that an argue? How's that like? I've always said this. Forwards get punished, punished oh, time. way more than outside backs, and that just proves it, and that is a flaw in the system. That is terrible. You can't tell me that. Like I know Nelson is a fucking big boy and he's probably an outlier. Like yeah. he's a he's 125 kilos. But Spencer Lenu and Valentine Holmes hitting someone like coming in full throttle, that's not going to be that much different of a force. Like what about Stevie Maddon? He can generate fucking oath. He can generate he can. some force. George Defua. We're the some of the biggest hitters of all time right there. Fucking hell! I hate that that's argument. A terrible argument, man. That I is a poor argument for the NRL. That's yuck. So if you're bigger and stronger and faster, you 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 drive into like a, another bloke's head, and that's so that's on your that's on you. Yeah. No, you can, that can't fly. Yeah, they shouldn't even have said that. I was trying to think of they a, shouldn't even have said that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It sucks, and oh, um, awful, I feel so. Oh, I don't think. No, I, I should I, come out that he's victimized about being a big guy. <laughs> What's the um, cancel culture for uh, yeah. for making him saying that he's too big? <laughs> That's what he should be saying. That's the only way he would have got a grade down to a grade one. Here's, here's one That's for disgusting. you. John Crawford wrote this. 
Yeah, yeah, big shaming. Yeah, big shaming. Big, big, shaming. Strong, big, strong and fast shaming. Yeah. Big- um, <laughs> Big nas shaming. <laughs> big nasty shaming. <laughs> nasty shaming. <laughs> My bad. My bad for being too nasty. Yeah. This one's from John Crawford. Sorry for this novel, boys, and I cut it down because it's way too much, but the first bit pretty much nails it. Um, suspensions should 100% be served during regular season games only. I hate the storm, but I'm gutted for Big Nelson missing a GF3 suspension. While I think his tackle definitely warrants time on the sideline, missing finals and origin is not right unless it's deemed a malicious act. Mm. I agree with that. Yeah, totally agree. Could you So just say, <clears throat> for example, um, you let Nelson play um, – and just say normally he would have got four tackles, right? Before it got before he um, fought it and got five. Like I think Nelson would give up eight games yeah, next year to yeah. play in this game, and I think it means a lot more. And I and I agree. Like if it's if it's not malicious, like and 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 although they're it's going a rugby for contact, league hit, man, it's a rugby, it's a league, rugby hit. league hit. It's not cheap. It's not out of the spirit of the game. If it was a cannonball, fuck him. Any- if it was a swinging arm, fuck him. Like if he puts his if if a, you know. Like I reckon totally. the, there was an example that they used and it was um, our man Widamu Greg mm. and he got Connor Watson. Sorry, Widamu, if that was the grand final, you're out, bro, yeah. because he there was no uh, control in that at all. He just went, he was a lazy tackle and he went after him. But if it's one of these like – Sometimes these tackles happen in the yeah. game, and, and I just think it's hard. I just hate how they rule on this, man. This is a hard one. You can sit here and argue about this all day. There was For no sure malicious couldn't. action that he didn't want to kill Lindsay Collins. Lindsay Collins, like, did they take into account like the actual guy with the ball gets knocked out a lot as well? I think so. They'd have to, you know, like if, if, if you do that to Hargraves, does Hargraves just get up and play the ball? Well, I'm not, not no disrespect out. to Lindsay, you know what I mean? But Hargraves has got like elbows of steel, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you're not, it's, you can get you can barely get at his head. Well, someone brought uh, Gus brought up a really good point. I was listening to Gus on it, and they're like, he's, he he talked about what what do they expect Nelson to do? So you look at last week as an example. Everyone's saying low your target. Tolly Collar did. Boom. He's out. He missed the entire game. He was on the other end of it. So uh, do, are we allowed to protect the defenders in any way? I thought it was such a that's a great way um, to put it. Yeah, a really good point on with regards to that as well. So and you know, um, like does it feel for big if, nasty? If, if you know, no disrespect to Collins, like you know, if he doesn't play the ball the other way and you know like does it, is it play on just say if you if, okay I've just said that was question. hard yeah if he doesn't play the ball like that he doesn't look so rattled and he still gets hit like that yep. he gets up plays the ball we go play on no. is it still like that I'll throw another one at you I'll throw another hypothetical he plays the ball straight goes off HIA ruled out category one is it still the severity? I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. I, think it I is. just think because it, I think because it's a really in that he bad the look for the game, right? Yeah. Playing the ball backwards, we don't want to see that. He looked concussed, everything like that. But like, if he was playing the ball straight and he, everyone just sort of got around him, got around him after, like they do, yeah, it would have the play would have been that way. The camera would have been off. So they look for indicators, right? So if he got up, played the ball because he stumbled after he played yeah, the ball. But if he played it straight, I think you're right. I, I think I think it's a just, great two. I think it's a great two, and I yeah. think Nelson plays. But because he was just obviously rattled as hell. Wasn't a good look for the game, and they just sort of went. Hey, and that's oh yeah, and you don't think the NRL are not even going to risk that shit in the grand final? No, because that that can go off in their biggest game of all time. Thousands of young kids watching it. It's very impressionable young world that we live in. Mm-hmm. They're probably thinking like, nah. I'm not even going to risk this shit. Do you know what I reckon played a part in it as well? So the, grade three, the, straight away, can't even come back. Yeah. That's what I mean. That was more my point. Grade three, no hope he's going to come back. Do your best. Fucking five weeks. Mm. You know what played a part as well? The week before, the referees copped so much backlash about not using their, their whistle and everyone was arguing yeah. like why, why do they adjudicate the rules differently? I reckon that played a part too. Everything plays a part yeah. in this one decision. Nelson's just the – not saying scapegoat. He's the example. He's the example. They man. made an example of him, yep. didn't they? That sucks. Um, well, we talked about the Kevy situation, but Madge has officially been confirmed. Um, this one's from Joe Holiday. Justin, can you do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation explaining Madge going to Brisbane and the drama <laughs> and losing the New South Wales coaching? <laughs> that is so random. <laughs> So we like have. You, we so have. Like you're known for it. We have the fucking <laughs> weirdest fucking fans out there. So I don't know where that's come from. Have I ever can done you, an Arnold? Can you fucking do one? No, no way. <laughs> no way. I even, I Get down. Only, <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. You have never ever used yeah, one. I don't think so. I've done it because I'm not confident in it. Get out of here, Madge. <laughs> Get out of here, Madge. Come on. Get down. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. Joe, Mace did one for you. Let's move on. Uh, the worst kept, re- kept secret in rugby league day was confirmed. Broncos have announced Michael Maguire. Uh, a Broncos announcement was made on Tuesday with Maguire named as Kevin Walter's successor at Red Hill. Maguire has signed a three-year deal. The 50-year-old has uh, 300 three NRL and Super League games under his belt as a coach. At Wigan, South Sydney and the West Tigers, including leading the Rabbitohs to their first premiership in 43 years in 2014, Wigan to their first title and Challenge Cup victory in many years. And you've got to remember too, and I, Wigan were going through a tough period there yeah, for a little while. he brought them back. Yeah, and he brought them back. So, and They were going to get relegated. Yep, and also, what's his name? Sean Wayne followed him, and he, yeah. um, he it, like the culture's been great there for yep. years now, and they've won multiple trophies, Wigan. So, um he, yeah, he's left him in a, in a really good place. Um, all right, so Madge addressed. Um, I'll watch it, um, Mace, and I'll. we talked about this a little bit before with regards to Gordy. Mm. So Madge addressed the unrest from the Broncos legends and mentioned he would love to sit down with them. Gordy uh, said on 360 he wasn't interested. He said lose his phone. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, lose his phone number. Oh, I love it. He I goes, in it. my opinion, it's a really tough situation. Oh, sorry, oh, actually, this is not red. This is my fucking opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is your opinion? Yeah. In my opinion, I wrote this down. Uh, it's a really tough situation for Gordy because obviously he wants the club to do well, but first and foremost, he's always going to defend his mate, Kev. Of course. We said it before. Yep. Like He loves Kevy and he's a close friend, man. Do so you think like- Do you think he he's, he's capable of breaking bread like once it settles with Madge? Or do you, actually, I don't know. Uh, quickly, yep. Come back. So Gordy was the backs coach at South before Madge got there. Oh, is this personal? Oh, there you go. Oh, Ooh. they've got bad blood. So, so Lukey just said, you, have you got that confirmed? All right. So, so Lukey- and He was the backs coach. There's no way he was backs. He was forwards because I remember- sorry, sorry, sorry. Fucking hell. Remember, <laughs> so, back rows coach. Back rows. Yeah. So, Gordy, um, Lukey was saying that Gordy used to be a coach of South Sydney. I remember yeah, that. that. Lukey was saying, Gordy. Yeah, Lukey. Lukey. Lukey says started uh, this. And he reckons there might be bad blood because when Madge arrived, he- Obviously, he, 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 he must have got rid of Gordy. Okay. That must be, that makes sense I remember now. stories of sense. Dave Taylor telling us- Coley, the and, coal train. And Sammy Burgess, that Gordy used to absolutely rip shreds off the coal train. He would – oh, as if he wouldn't. <laughs> as if he wouldn't. He just sees so much talent. Yeah. Oh, man. Imagine I mean, them two that, working sort of together. Sense. But I think – I don't know. I'm not sure if Gordy's um, – Gordy's pretty stubborn, man. Yeah, I reckon. You know, when you get to that age, if you say shit like that, you mean it. Respectfully. Respectfully. Like, and, and I get it, man. I'm getting to that age as well. You fucking piss me off. You, or do something that happened. Mm-hmm. You're fucking done. Yeah. And well, I think we are imagine Gordy. The circles are getting They're smaller. Done. The yeah. circle gets smaller and you yeah. don't need to make fucking more friends. So Gordy's like, lose my number. I'm not going to waste my time. You sack my – like you're – and that's – he's got in there like, you know, with – it's just fuck. what do you what do? It you was do? in jest, but what I don't do think it do? wasn't in jest. It wasn't in <laughs> yeah. jest. Gordy's got – I'm telling you, his body language. He's Silky Johnson. He said it, he he's said gone it, Silky Johnson. He him. said it as a joke. He has no intention of speaking to Madge. He ain't going and to train and, and, and my next thing, anything. my next, my next question is respectfully: How important is it? Do you think it's important? Do you think like connecting with with veteran players is as important as it thinks, it or is it on your priority? Right? Is, is it more of a is it more of a PR thing for and coaches? Think, I think. Yeah, I think just say with and not just about, Broncos. No, just in how, how Madge sort of got all the older players in and all the old, old heads for New South Wales. Yeah, and he's probably got that same sort of. You know, that's how he breaks bread. That's mm. how he does it at clubs and, yeah. and origin level and all that kind of stuff. It's probably his thing, right? Trying to get everyone it's inclusive. It's a nice touch. Getting everyone inclusive, but yeah. like not everyone rolls like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's different when you're trying to get old New South Wales players in and all that sort of stuff. He probably would have done the Tigers getting all Blocker and, yep. and um, Benny Elias and all those greats coming in. And then he's probably doing it, trying to do it at Brisbane. It's a simple way to break bread and trying to give him what goal we're trying to do because – other than that, you're going to see all these guys like commenting about you. Just with regards to this though, you've been a, a – you know, you're back involved with the club and very yeah. proud of what's happening at the club. Was there ever a time where you like – you sort of distanced yourself from a club and do you do you feel appreciated and, and feel acknowledged now that you are a part of the club again in, in, in a way or did it take a while to get took, connected back to the club? It takes a while. Yeah. You know, like I didn't feel connected there – when I retired, you know, that was 2016 from that. So that era on, 17, 18, 19, 20, like that was a whole different administration. I didn't know anybody there that yep. was familiar with my time there. And then this whole new gen- this whole new generation now with mm. Gus and Aaron Warburton and all these guys and old board members that I sort of knew before yep. and have this friendship with, that's why the my transition back into the club – it's pretty seamless because I trust most of these guys around, right? Okay. And I think if it was, it would never have happened straight away because yeah, I didn't gotcha. know anyone. I didn't know the CEO. I didn't know the chairman and that. I didn't know those guys. You only knew Gus. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, before Gus oh, got before there, Gus. before Gus got yeah, there, gotcha. I didn't know anyone. Now I know everyone, right? Yeah. But, but it starts with Gus. Yeah. He's the big dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. So now going back to Gordy and getting Gordy back involved and guys like Shane Webb. Well, Gordy's an ambassador for the Titans anyway. So he said that and that's it. He was joking around about like that being an issue. But really, like I think it would be more about like – Madge would just love to sit him down and just go like, just fucking, just don't pump us. Like, well, you know, that that's all he would want, really, wouldn't he's he? Smart, because look at Gordy's, yeah. Gordy's, um, highly influential, highly influential, highly within influential. the Brisbane, within Queensland, within yeah. within everyone, right? He's on three hundred and sixty. He has a voice. He has yeah. an opinion, and it care, and it matters, yeah. right? It yeah. matters. It does. And so I don't think Madge is silly trying to get Gordy on side. Mm. And if it stems back to mm. 2011, 2012, mm. then you got to really. But you know Gordy's going. You got a sauce. N- nah. <laughs> <laughs> lose my number, bro. I lose my number. Bro. <laughs> I understand from Gordy's point of perspective. I understand where Madge is going with it. Yep. But if it goes deeper, Lukey Stowe, mm. that's where I'm yeah, like, yeah, you, they, could get he ugly. Gonna di- he's going to dig his heels in Gordy. As soon as they slip up, bang, it's on. Hey, like he's, he's coming. Madge has got. I think he's got. He's eased up on the Broncos because. Kevy was the coach. For sure. And that's why. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I reckon going into next year, Madge has got to a magic round and if he's not getting <laughs> results, Gordy's coming after him. Yeah, uh, and I'm fair enough. We'll be fair using enough. It. We'll be using it on content fair anyway. Enough. Uh, questions um, with regards to Madge's intense personality clashes, um, that he's a really intense coach and how that is going to clash with stars, most notably Reese Walsh. Yeah, I'm not sure how Reese takes criticism. Right, because I think Madge is one of those guys. sits down here, big on eye contact, mm. that old school sort of coach. He and I think he'll evolve. As Did I tell you, I ran into him at Coogee. He's intense. Huh? He doesn't fucking. No, like he don't, he your don't, eyes he don't go away. No. Yeah, and I'm okay at it. Yeah, but he fucking had me feeling awkward. My first coffee with him, <laughs> I'm just sitting there because I don't give a fuck, right? Yeah. I just I, I sit there and talk anyway, so I just thought it was normal. We're just sitting there coffee, yeah, and he's I like, didn't know. I was like, yeah, but I just no, so I'm sitting there like this, yeah. just having a coffee, going, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it was just not nonstop for like an hour. I was just like, have I talked to you? I was thing. I was like, fuck, he loves eye contact. Yeah. No, but I, I had that in my head. I'm like, he don't stop staring. Yeah, I was at a Galo's, right, and. Madge was, Madge was weird. This is weird. I was at a Galo's in fucking Coogee, yeah. Coogee Bay Road. Madge was across the road. This year? This year. Like, Shit. fuck, just after they won he the series. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd sit in there and I'm sitting, like, I'm sitting down. I was like, oh, fuck, there's Madge. And he looks over and he goes, he waves at me. And I was like, Shit, imagine who I am. <laughs> so he comes running over, right? Yeah. He comes like, I'll go, fuck, he's going to come over. I'm like, fuck, yeah. getting a little bit nervous. Like, whatever. <laughs> Try to play cool, have a chat to him because he, yeah, dad, he did some stuff with dad for the selections. Yeah. Man, he did fucking not – like we were there. We had a chat Doesn't for five budge. minutes and it was like all over the place. It yeah. went all different directions. He did And he was like he that didn't. the whole time. And I was like fucking – fuck, this you is – You just got to either lock in or yeah. you might as well look at the ground. Yeah. I think there's two options there. You don't look around like that. You either lock in yeah. or just fucking stare at the ground. Yeah. You know, I was just staring – I was just – <laughs> I was waiting for my fucking big Bondi to fucking hurry up and <laughs> get, so I get out of there. And I think, you know, most of these young men like Walsh and Cobbo and all that, they're from a different generation. But yep. They're still getting indoctrinated into that old school, right? It's how you raise and all that kind of stuff. Took so I'm pretty sure, pretty that. sure they're, they're raised right. Yeah. Right? And if you know what Madge is like, and if you don't know what Madge is like, get to know what his personality is like. And they should understand that in the first couple of instances that they meet because you're like, fuck, you get, it's very glaring. Yep. Big blue eyes staring through your fucking soul. Mm. He likes it. Yeah. Well, and I don't think you use it as an intimidation thing, right? If you talk to a guy like I think like it's Wayne, a level of respect. Yeah, it is. But yeah. he, he respects what you're saying. He yeah. wants to hear you talk. He wants to see your body language and everything. You talk to guys like Wayne Bennett, mate. Mm. Wayne Bennett's not big on that. It didn't come natural to me for a while, yeah. that sort of communication. Yeah. I've got better with age, mm. but like as a kid, I was a little bit like- yeah. And you just so, got to think it's natural. It's like you just—it's a respect thing. If you yeah. think it's a respect thing, you're like, oh, he respects me. Yeah, so gotcha. you'll you'll get into it, and it's just like you'll probably look at him more in the eyes when you're talking to him because it's. It's mutual. Yeah. You know, but if you're not I was like feeling that, the pressure. Yeah, you feel the yeah, pressure, I was. right? And the next yeah. time you will, next time you have a little meeting with him, you'll yeah. be fine. Be so much easier. Because he respects you. He respects you as a man. So I think these young kids need to understand that about Madge. Yeah. He's not trying to stare for his soul, trying to intimidate you. Because you know when see, you see guys like that trying to, it's like, fuck off, mate. Yeah. Or when they I'd shake rather, hand I'd rather hard look at the ground. You know, when they, when I'd rather look at the ground. Yeah. If, I, if I know, if I sort of peep like what you're trying to do, yeah. I won't even give you any eye contact. I'd rather stare in the fucking sun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather stare at the glaring sun than give you that respect. Fuck when you when you're off someone, fuck oh, it's so mate. visible. Oh, it's like oh, I need you to be st- giving everyone eye contact at the golf day. <laughs> of course, tomorrow. I will. I respect I'm everyone. Kidding. I'm only kidding. Hey, uh, by the way, Reese Walsh, 
Yeah. He's going to love Madge. So I did a golf. I did the golf yeah, clip with uh, Walshy last year. Mm. Um, we were on the same car together. The people. One thing that people don't understand about Reese Walsh, they see him as a pretty boy. They see him as Larry. They see him as um, getting agitated in games. We did some content. We picked up some stuff too, Lukey, that we we showed on that episode. Go back and watch it. Talking about detail. He's a fucking footy head. Yeah. I can vouch for him. Some of the conversations we had off content, um, this is my first interaction with him, but we sat in a golf cart for three or four hours together and we talked about life. And we did at this point too, this is before it had been announced, he had told me that he was having conversations with Billy Slater. This is yeah, before right. he'd become Queensland yeah, fullback okay. as well. And, yes. and it wasn't about the Queensland um, um, job. Billy was giving him some, um, some stuff to, to work on in his mm. game. And I can tell, I can tell within he went on that role and, last and, year. Was it? What's that? Was that was that prior to him before he made it Origin? Last year, yeah, but killing it the Be, whole year before he made Origin. Yeah, Start of the killer. season, so like three weeks in, we did that episode. Anyway, I was just chatting. I can tell within a, a half an hour, an hour, if a guy's a footy head or not. Mm. Reese Walsh is a footy head. I can fucking I can, yeah, you tell Madge is, You can tell Madge is, yeah. These two, got, I'm telling you right now. I said it on the last body. Clip it up, Lukey. Early years of Crows, Broncos will be competing for a grand final next year. They they could be if they buy him. They could be there, and I reckon the big part of it, he is going to unlock the best version of Reese Walsh that we've seen. And Ezra Mam, I reckon too. And Ezra Mam, dividends, man. Those guys, they work together. I love I love Ezra Mam. I love Paddy Carrigan. I love Payne Haas. If the Broncos are going to do anything, they need the best version of totally Reese Walsh. Agree. So, and I reckon, uh, I reckon Madge will, um, he'll get the best. Out of him. Now let's move on to the New South Wales coach because you don't have one anymore, big fella. Oh, so, um, are you disappointed that Madge is no longer the coach? And who do you want to coach? New South. No, Wales? I'm not disappointed. I totally understand. Have a look at the bank balance. What's happening there with um with the Broncos? You're not get, you're not getting that in New South Wales. No, and I think I mean Madge loves like cultivating this whole like new younger kids and mentoring them and like uh, starting a whole new culture within a club. Mm. He loves that shit. He, you don't get to do that with New South Wales. He talked about missing the day to day stuff. Yeah, he misses that because yeah. he when loves he it. When camp. I was talking to him, he he I said, "What's the difference?" You know, blah blah. Yeah. And he was like. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I understand it. Right, you get the coach, the Broncos. And at the end of the day, you have your little tenure at the Broncos, whatever happens, happens. You can always come back to New South Wales because mm -hmm. they're not guaranteed jobs forever, right? That's true. You're talking three to four years, five years, max, six years max. Do you not think New South Wales were filthy and hold this against Well, they should have fucking offered him a three-year deal instead of one. To begin with. Yeah, like, you no, know what I mean? Or two. Or like, to begin with and he got two. Yeah, yeah. like, I mean, like, they should have respect, you know. Now now the shoe's on the other foot, right? He's in a power position. He, he is. Got us, he got us over the line this year. Now he's going to Brisbane. You're talking a, a shitload of difference with the money and you get to coach the Broncos. I've always thought Madge was a good coach. I understood there were players from South Sydney that were burnt out by him by the back end of that stint. I don't think I don't think Madge is maybe you know maybe you change over time. I don't think Madge is a five year coach. He I think three be. years good, and you, you like when you think about where his credibility has gone from in the last two to three years. Imagine if he didn't take the New Zealand job mm. where he'd be now, yeah, because no one wanted big, him at club big, level. Big deal after Tiger Town, yeah, um, and then he wins for New Zealand. Therefore. He probably becomes like his candidacy for the uh, New South Wales job skyrockets. Then he goes and gets the job done for New South Wales against Billy Slater when he'd won back to backs. And everyone was talking about Billy Slater being the best coach that mm. was coaching. Gotta, and now he's got a powerhouse club like the Broncos. What a crazy but three years! Everyone looks at like um, just say the wins and losses and everything like that in the rep scene. All you talk, if you talk to anyone in New Zealand, the camp is all about how connected and everything was. Mm. You know, like he's really brought back into that. New South Wales really connected. He's big about that, right? Mm. And probably if you look at the Bro Bro Brisbane Broncos, you go, that superstar team doesn't look connected. Mm. That's a big thing that Brisbane's probably looked at, Agreed. right? You know, it's like that feels like it's all over the place. A guy like Madge, I don't know if, yeah. he, if he I can think, bring that together. I, I think the part with the Broncos that. Um, if you don't understand rugby league, you can't see it as well. Mm. I don't think it's a disconnection between the playing group. I think the playing group are fine. Yeah, well, people it, people were using that as an excuse. I just don't think they believed in Kevy that, at the end of the that. day. And because they, it doesn't matter like how close you are as a team. If if the messaging's not correct or the planning's not correct, and shits willy nilly through the week, 
and you've had a shit week of training or you don't believe in the game plan, it's like it, it can be perceived that as a playing group you you're not connected together, but it's really the connection from the top. And I think when I say connection, I mean it from that. Okay, gotcha. When I mean it as a player's okay. perspective. Yep. I mean in the whole football yeah, gotcha. staff and and the player staff. Yeah, it's different. And also the you messaging different pages, man. Like I've seen it. Before, what, it's what, have we, what have we said about Cameron Serraldo and, and Stephen Crichton? He's an extension of the coaching mm. staff. What's Reynolds going to be like with Madge? Yeah. You know? He's an important part. Yeah. Get him um, fit for a year. Who do you want to coach New South Wales? Who are the candidates? Um, I've, who are they even tossed up? So, uh, Matty Johns said he wants a hardened NRL coach, and he's even not opposed to bringing in current coaches. And the two that stand out, and I think they're good shouts, I think it's time for Ivan. Yeah. I think it's time for Ivan. I think that system is has set at Penrith. The culture, although Ivan's the one that oversees everything, I think Ivan can step away for fucking six to eight weeks in a part-time role for New South Wales. He's the only – he's the exception to the rule for me. Otherwise, mm. maybe Sticky because Sticky's got that – Fuck, yeah, Stick. Maybe yeah, Stick. Maybe my – yeah. Just me knowing like the – Selection committee is. Yeah. I think they'd love Ricky Shook. And I got be and perfect. I, I seen I seen Woodsy toss this up, and I and I and this was this is a good shout too. So when you think about uh, Ivan and where he stands now, we start talking about him with coaches. What's one thing Bellamy couldn't do? Origin. Yeah, he couldn't win an Origin series, could he? But obviously, he's going up against the, the thing. But so if you if if you're if you're looking at it for a legacy um, point of view from Ivan, I think this is the I right if time. He prioritizes it. I don't, I, don't he, I don't think he does. I don't think he's. I honestly don't think he'd even look at it and go, "I'm going to coach Origin now." Now Madge is gone. Thank God, here's my chance. I don't think he really cares. I, I don't think, think he just for those cards so close. I don't think for those re reasons, but I think it would be appealing to, oh, him to yeah, win, I know, a, but win I Origin the, series. The, 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 you think they didn't throw that at him last year? I don't even think he's going to even risk it by the time when, when he's at the helm there and they're going for five. And it's just like, you only go to six. How about this? Seven. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I just don't think he's. A, I don't think he would consider it unless he loses the grand Got to lose. While the streak is still going, he probably stays on, doesn't Gotta he? Got to lose. Yeah. Got to lose. Yeah. And then just go, oh, okay, that was great. Yeah. What's, what next? Because imagine the history. What does Ricky do, but, right? Ricky's an you know, interesting one. I know, like, but he's yeah. got to give up the green machine. Where he fucking loves. Yeah, there's too much work to be think, done. I don't think he does that. I reckon there's – I reckon – Canberra and my Smokey next year. Um, I'm excited for Canberra and I reckon he's got too much work to do with Canberra. Do they go for someone who's like an assistant coach or? The two names I've seen in comments are Matt King and Boydie. Boydie. Yeah. Matty King's in the coaching Boydie's, realm. Boydie's, Boydie's done two years. A bit. Boydie's done two years. I think he's too connected to the playing group. He needs to be retired for a few more years. Yeah, I, I think Boydie's. He's always going to be a part of the New South Wales. I don't think, and I don't think if they ask him, he'd do it. At this stage in his career, I agree. Give it five years. I think I think he's still a little bit Give green. Give it five years, mate. Yeah, he's, I think he's, he's a little just, bit he's green. Just in his fucking career. retired three years ago. I reckon once Boydie gets it, he'll be he won't give it it's up. Too raw. Yeah, yeah. I reckon yeah. Boydie's the sort of guy like if he does an assistant coach and, and be New South Wales, I think he just needs he's to be a leader. Of he men. just needs to be around. Yeah, and learn his craft, and you know, you probably think I don't want to coach that. Yeah. Jeez, it's a big it's a big step, but. Just work a little the bit. Matty alone. King was the assistant coach, and Matty King's played Origin. Does Matty King have the temperament? He always seemed like a knockabout, like sort of. He changes. You change your tone when you get in the coaching. Belt. Okay. Yeah. He's still got that in him, but yeah. it's like he's got a quirky around, personality yeah, hey, from afar. Like he's from afar, mate. Yeah. yeah. I love Matty King, but yeah, I don't think there's any real like guys that are going for it. Hmm. I, I, Loz was tossed up as well about bringing Loz back in. Yeah, Loz is a big shot. Yeah, he'd do a job. Yeah. I don't know. If the guys that have been out for like so long and, and not in with the game and where it's going, you can't just roll in there and just be Laurie Daly, right? What are all our fans going to say? Uncle Widamu. Where's yeah. Uncle Widamu? No. <laughs> you could do this. Andrew John. I mean, like, here's your perfect time to get Andrew Johns in there or Matty Johns. For everyone on Levels calling for Mace, if he does it, Levels is done. I can't do yeah, this by myself. Can't, you can't. I've got to step <laughs> away from levels. <laughs> That's my priority. Well, no. if you go to fucking New South Wales, we're coming with. Yeah. Ricky, you can be the. I'm a non stop yeah. podcast. Yeah. On a, no. I, lo I love New South Wales and coaching and mentoring younger kids, man. That's about it. That's yep. about it. All right. Um, let's move on. And we're, we're filming this right now. Uh, I think everyone is arriving for the Dally M's. Oh, um, yeah. So shit. I want prediction for uh, Dally M. Player of the year and coach of the year. That's it. Because the other ones, we can go through positions. But All right. We're going to go. <laughs> I think Jerome Hughes is going to win. Mm. I thought that for so and, long. And, and then I hear the mail before and that Teddy might win. Oh, 
Teddy's had a cracker of a year. He's had a great year. Mm. I just think Jerome Hughes has had a better year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think Jerome Hughes by like one point. I'm, I hope Jerome wins it. My gut says Teddy or even Isaiah Yo. No. I think Yo is a shout. Yeah. Shit. Coach but, of the year, Cam Serraldo. Been a few Yoey articles today. Like I'm just looking at it from the media perspective. Yeah, and like the they're pushing Isaiah Yoey. Get a middle up there. I'd yeah. love Isaiah Yoey to win. I just know how it goes. The, yeah, if Teddy wins, great work. Especially after what happened during Origin, mm. you got to credit that the mindset, the resilience. Um, Coach of the year, I thought Serraldo all year. Serato. I've changed my mind on it. I'm going Ivan. I'm going. I've, like I think it's a fucking joke that Ivan. Yeah, he's playing even, in his fifth grand final it. and he's never won a coach of the they year. They never do that. Huh? Oh, so he did? He won coach of the year when they lost against the Storm. Oh. So if he gets it, it this year. Oh, good. Oh, he's won it already? Oh, fuck. Someone, t- I'd seen something that they said um, he hadn't won it before. Yeah, fucking Bellamy then. Anyone no, else? No, 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 yeah, no, not, 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 not having a crew. You know, I love Syrah. We ran into Syrah the other day too. What a legend. And my fucking seat is broken. Um, Bellamy, at the start of the year, what did we think, respectfully, of Tyron Wishart, Jack Howarth, um, Anderson, Sean Bloor, Grant Anderson? Uh, the jury was still out on Nick Meaney. We'd seen one good year from Ali Katoa. Yeah, um, not much. Josh was King was a, just a, Melbourne, a typical Melbourne Storm player. Liero. Liero moved from the edge back row to the middle and he p- fucking was knocking on the door for origin. McDonald. McDonald. <laughs> He's a fucking dog, man. If you've got a picture of like, well, what's it like for a Melbourne st- – like give us – put a, a, a photo of a the Melbourne head. Storm player. It's his chin. <laughs> 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 oh, they, the players love him too. Oh, I've seen fuck, some I'd love comments. playing with him. Yeah, he goes hard. Yeah, uh, yeah. To answer your question, not that much. And I, I, I totally, I totally mm. agree with Belly. I think he's been the the best coach in the last. Do 20 you know how many Belly's won, um, mate? Are you looking at that too, Luke? Yeah, and I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a bit like tall and poppy syndrome. I just don't think they give it to the guys yeah, that have just that's achieved my so much. I'm They're always about the most the improved. biggest improver, isn't yep. it? Like yep. the most improved. And that's all they're going to get, those great coaches. They, they don't look at coaches of the year and go, oh, what a great year. They nah. look at fucking rings. Yeah, and that's what they judge How many rings I've got? Well, let's get to it. Let's get to the grand final because one of them is going to have another ring. That is yeah. crazy. That's mental. Like. <laughs> yeah, he's won the 21, 19, 17. Yeah, he doesn't care. Who Bellamy has? 11, 7, 6. He's fucking at it. All right, four. give it a zero. He's, give yeah, it a zero. Get off. Fucking give it a zero. Only second year in coaching. Give it to the young. Give man. it a zero. I'm with you. Let's go zero. Um and Husey. We're both on Husey and zero. We're both on. Yeah. Good luck, boys. Okay. Yep. Um, this will be we have people fucking spraying us tomorrow about the results. Um, Storm vs Panthers Sunday yeah. seven thirty p.m. Oh, yes. at a core stadium. The Storms lineup is Ryan Pappenhausen, Will Warbrick, Jack Howarth, Nick Meaney, Xavier Coates, Cameron Munster, Jerome Hughes, Tui Kamakamitha, Harry Grant, Josh King, Sean Bloor, Ali Katoa, Trent Liero, Tyron Wishart, Christian Welsh, Lazarus Valepu, well Alec McDonald. Well done. Eighteenth man is Grant Anderson, Joe Chan. I reckon is a shout and Sua. Lavi, uh, Suat Lavi, far long or he mm. is number 22. The other guys, Kane Bradley and Tepo Morrell, probably aren't going to feature. As for the Panthers, Dylan Edwards, Sunia Taruva, Isaac Tongo, Paul Alamotti. What a, what a journey. What a journey well for done. him. Well done, Paul. Uh, him and um, Sean Bloor are cool stories. Yep. Um, where are we at? Brian Toto, Jerome Loy, Nathan Cleary, Moses Liotta, Mitch Kenny, James Fisharis, Luke Garner holds that spot, Liam Martin, Isaiah Yo, Brad Schneider, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry, Matt Eisenhuth, Casey McLean, Scotty Sorensen in the 19 jersey, and I think that's about it. Mm. What a game. This is going to be yeah. huge, mate. So when – you know how I go off big, big games like this. I just measure – like and I, from 1 to 17, if they play their best game, mm-hmm. who wins? With with Nas, no, no Nas. How, like if they play ten times, so the, uh, just say one time they play nine out of ten. Every single person plays. Their oh, best gotcha. Game. Who do you reckon wins? They play their best game of their life. Who who wins? I can't. Pick That's it. how I measure teams. I, That's I, I how can't. I pick them. So let's 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 do a fun thing. Let's break down the positions. Yeah, well, look so, at the front rows. You're going so right down a pen. Who are you giving a tick? Pappenhausen or Dylan Edwards? Edwards, agreed. Will Warbrick and. Xavier Coates versus Sunia Taruva and Brian Toto. I'll give one to Toto and the other one to 
I want you to the pick other the, one. I want Coates. You, I want you to pick like the Coates. combinations. I like Coates and Toto if I was ever going to go. So who gets the nod over Toto and Coates then? Toto. All right, so Panthers. So two to Panthers. Uh, Isaac Tungle and Alamotti versus Helworth and Meany. Yeah, they nearly rule each other out. I don't know. I don't you can't know. Can't pick one on yeah, that one. I don't because they're not like they, I haven't seen enough. I haven't seen enough. I'm, I like Tungo because mm. he's just he's turned into an animal now. Every time someone bags his defense, he just goes to another level. Mm. Alamotti skill set very high. And he's only played his second year in first grade, and then you look on the other side. Nick Meany's probably the, what the most. He's the one with the most games, right? Mm. Probably the most experience. And Jack Howell, second year in first grade, they're babies, bro. But you're probably going to give it to uh, Tungo because he's, he's played there before. I think so too. Yeah, if yeah. you're going to pick one. Jerome Law and Nathan Cleary versus Jerome Hughes Fuck, it's, and Cam Watts. Even, even. And that's what, yeah, that's what I go through. And I'm just like, I'm going to pick – I'll pick Cleary ahead of Hughes and I'll pick Munster ahead of Luai. I want the combination. Give me a combination. I like Luai and Cleary because Cleary's just got that clutch, man. You're trying to put him at the best ever. I'm going Munster and Hughes. Biased. Yes. <laughs> Tweet. He's making fucking Cleary the best player in the world and he doesn't be fucking – In the ever. world, Craig. Come on, man. In ever. the world, mate. Ever. Wait, wait till yeah. – hey, if they win, wait till I got ready to go on Tuesday. Yeah. You're, you're going to lose your shit. You're going to hate <laughs> me. <laughs> if they win, I'm going to go off. Go uh, off. Tui Kam- Kamakamitha and Josh King. <laughs> this is yeah. Moses Leod and James Fisharis. Yeah. Tick. Harry Grant over, over Harry, Mitch Kenny. Harry there we just. go. Harry's back. Uh, Sean Bloor and Ali Katoa over Liam Martin and Luke Garner. That's an interesting one. It is interesting, but because Liam Martin's over there, I've got to take that back row. I'm going to go to the back row. And I'll look at the whole back row. As a ho- I mean, I'll look at the middles. I'll put I'll put King, Kamakamitha, and Liero in one thing, right? And I'll put the two, Leota, Fish, and Yo as one. Okay. That's how I'd rate them. All right. Because that's my middle. They're the ones that are doing it. And you're going to go Penrith. Either way, you got Penrith anyway. So yeah. if you have Yo, Yo, you've got Yo over Leo, yeah. but if you've got Fisher, Harris, Leota, they're over yeah. the three as well. So it doesn't matter. Um, bench, Brad Schneider, Lindsay Smith, Liam Henry, and Matt Eisenhuth, potentially Scott Sorensen. And. Tyron Wishart, Christian Wells, Lazarus Valepu, Alec McDonald, and I think potentially Joe Chan's a chance. <sighs> That's hard, isn't it? There's not like a clear cut, really good bench no, this year. And is even there? when you when I'm breaking that down there, that's just like one millimeter or a point that you're going to give the halves to to Penrith, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Storm because I like Tyron Wishart's year and I've I love the experience of Christian Welsh. Mm, Christian yeah. Welsh on the bench as well. I, I, I understand that. And then the other kids Played six games. He's yep. a middle that's going to go on there. He's the, the best middle in the game. The least amount of games in a grand final ever. Yeah. That's crazy. And so then he just McDonald, took- who's a dog, I reckon he'll handle any situation. Then those guys from Penrith, they're just like, they they just go. Lindsay Smith, their main objective is what, when the big boys come off, don't lose any petrol. Keep flooring it. All right, let's get to the tab. Our partner's tab. Melbourne versus Penrith. Dollar eighty five about the Melbourne Storm, two dollar underdogs, the Penrith Panthers. The line is minus one and a half. Who wins the grand final, Mace? And then we'll get to Clive Churchill after this. Penrith, Penrith. I just think with Big Nas out, that's what got me to Penrith. Mm. He is so, he's the best decoy in the game. And I think when they get to certain points on the field. When Big Nas is lined up outside A and then he's going to do that decoy where Harry Grant comes out a little bit, he either goes under him, he either hits inside A, it's really late and Harry Grant can hold it up that Mm. good. Then you hold that Penrith middle up. If you don't, if you have no disrespect, Josh King and Kamen Kamitha, you can't do what Nas does. Mm. You, you, you'll be holding on the inside of Jerome Hughes just so the markers don't come out and split you and the A doesn't come up and get Jerome Hughes, right? Yeah. So they can play out wide. So I think it's such a distraction. It's such a distraction. And I don't think people understand the loss of this guy. This guy's six foot six and a half and 125 kilos, who's a fucking wrecking ball, <laughs> who doesn't give a shit about guys like Fisher Harris or Leota, mm. right? And if I was Fish or Leota, I'll be looking going, it's like being in under fucking 12s going, is that big kid playing? Yeah. And he's not playing. He's got a broken arm. So you arm. just – He yeah. rocks up with a cast. Yeah, he, ro- he like rocks mad. up. You know, the young kid, yeah, the big fucking six foot five Tongans out and you're like, <laughs> fuck, we can win today. <laughs> and that's what Penrith's going. Yeah. You know, you, and, it's, and that's what sort of um, – Aura that he holds in the NRL. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you've got to account for Big Nas everywhere on the field. And I'm like, he's got that one game in him where he goes all in. And I think this would have been it. He would have went at Fisher Harris's chest and Leota's. 
and they, they are man, man's man, right? Yeah. And what are you going to do? What can, you I know can't, what those you can't hit that guy. I swear to God. They'll try. Of course you can. <laughs> but, like, can you, can you do it? Yeah, like, you yeah. can't. It's physics and genetics and yeah. just power and raw power. If he doesn't want you to hit him, Nas, you don't hit him. You know what the difference is? I You'll tackle last, him. In the last couple of years, they've um, gang tackled Nas and gone after him as yeah. a group. And But they've also had, like, felt like Nas was just continually either just sending people at him, whether it was, like, those two and then it would have Spencer and then, and then Isaiah yeah. Yo would get in there. Ali Katoa hadn't developed into the play he had at the moment, and I reckon the physicality of a guy like Sean Bloor's really helped him as well. Yeah. So their back rowers help out with the physicality yeah. that Nas was just having to do all by himself last that's, year. Yeah, that's why Nas has been getting more one-on-ones. Yeah. And that's why I'm talking about in, in such high praise because at the start of this year, Nas was playing reserve grade. He was. Do you know what I mean? So the journey for Nas all year and the, the amount of work that Belly's been putting into him to get him into the playing weight and the mindset of being like this mm. to get us over what? Fucking Penrith in the grand final. Mm. And now you lost that big guy. And that's where I'm just thinking of Penrith. They're going, all right, sweet. We can handle Josh King. We can hang on, handle coming Kamitha, Liero, fucking um, Welsh, Welsh off the bench. Like, we got that. We've got him, right? We just, have to, we just have to execute. Then they've got to come with yeah, us. Yeah, I know what you mean by that. That's what I'm saying. The mindset of those middles are like, Fucking yeah. Their their mindset will go from let's go after them to like yeah. let, let's let's do this clinic. Let's see what they, they let's yeah. let's put a clinic on these guys. Let's yeah. let's out Melbourne, Melbourne. Yep. And that's what I'm thinking. I mean, like with if Cleary and Luai is not on, Yoey takes over. If Yoey's not on, they'll go to Liam Martin. Everyone has their turns of being the leaders in that team, right? Mm. The back five will turn it on if the middles aren't getting anywhere. Mm. And the middles will turn it on if the back five isn't going anywhere. So they have those they have that mindset of next man up mentality and everybody's the leader in that team. I'm not disrespecting any other no, team, no, but of they course just not. look at I look at them every level they go to another in, in each semi-final. I look like they've got another gear. It looks like they've got another gear. And I'm like, grand final, all they do is prep for the grand final. It looks like. It feels like it. Feels like it. Yeah. And then they go to another level. And then, look, it's not a fluke that everybody's fit and firing and ready to go. Yeah. Who's injured in Penrith? No one. Mm. It's a credit to Melbourne and Penrith, what yeah. they've been able to do with yeah. the rosters and everybody playing at such a high time. I just think it sucks that <clears> Nas is out because it fucking re- ruins with – fucks with my, um, my pick. And that's why I'm going Penrith. All right. I'll stick with Melbourne. Uh, Clive Churchill. Yoey, I think it's Yoey's turn. He's been in great form the last couple of weeks. I think it's if it's a little bit of drizzle or anything like that, it's going to be played through the middle. He gets he gets a line share of the ball. He be, plays on massive minutes, so I think he'll get it. All right, I'm going to go the money man. I right, Cam Munster, all the yeah. chat around the halves. <clears throat> I'm really worried, not worried, but I think the two sixes can play a big part in this game. Big time because I'm on Melbourne. It's it's a. Qu- I sort of like this guy a little bit from if, yeah. if anyone ha- hasn't really noticed over the years. So uh, I want him to get a, a Clive Churchill. Yeah. I understand where I'm coming from. I don't. It's a coin toss for me. Mm. Yeah, it I'm is. Only, I'm so only, I'm only just it. like showing my hands because I'm because the Nas is out. That's the only reason why I'm going for Penrith. The importance you can get, of that big guy. You can get thirteen bucks on the uh, with tab, um, and you can get eight dollars with tab uh, for Cam Munster. So thirteen for Isaiah Yo. Sorry. And eight bucks for Cam Munster. Mm. Um, I've got a little levels bets friend special as well for anyone who wants to jump on that. Um, I've got Jack Howarth. I think they'll attack in and around Isaac Tungall. I like Jack Howarth, the left centre for the Melbourne Storm. Big, powerful centre to score in the first 60 minutes with the Storm to win. For the value of $7 from the traders, specifically for our Levels Bets friends, special with a max bet of $25. As always, what we what we want everyone to be playing safe during this finals time, so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with. For free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. This will be, yeah, this will be one of the hardest <coughs> grand finals, I reckon, of all time. Yeah, I reckon it's going to have an Penrith, origin type feel to Penrith, it. Penrith, like Melbourne... 2.0, right? They've mm. sort of copied and pasted what they did. It's just been a golden era of players where Melbourne's lost players and Penrith have just had this golden era like 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 Melbourne did from 2006 to 2017. Yep. Do you know what I mean? I think it's <clears> something <throat> like that. So good luck with your punning. Good luck to everyone who has a wager. Good luck. Uh, good luck to everyone who goes out to the game. And good um, luck to all the players too. We've good, been for sure. Safely. And uh, and we'll see everyone at the golf day tomorrow. Anything else, Lucas? Pardon? Oh, yeah, and a bit of a delay on the potty uh, going away for the weekend. Got a mate's birthday, so uh, we will be filming on Tuesday next week. So a bit of delay. You can let everyone else dissect the game. We'll come over. We'll smash everyone out of the park. (laughs) (laughs) That's the plan. (laughs)